And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Soropelta, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord, as well as Marcos and Dinosaur4602. So thanks. Soropelta was a nodosaur that lived in the early Cretaceous in what's now North America, in Wyoming, Montana, maybe Utah. It was medium-sized, about 17.1 feet or 5.2 meters long. Gregory Paul estimated in 2010 that it was 19.7 feet or 6 meters long and weighed 2 tons. And Tom Holtz estimated it to be 25 feet or 7.6 meters long. Ooh, that's way bigger. Yes. Soropelta had a long tail that was about half the length of its body. One skeleton was found with 40 tail vertebrae, though some were missing, so there were more, maybe 50. Long tail. It weighed about 3,300 pounds or 1,500 kilograms, so it's about the same size as a modern rhinoceros. Yeah, I think a rhinoceros is a reasonably good comparison for an ankylosaur. Yeah, that's how they described it in the paper. Oh, too. cool. Yeah. So Soropelta was heavy because of its armor and had large spines on its neck, and it was covered in osteoderms. One skeleton was found with osteoderms preserved in situ. It had these two parallel rows of dome scutes that ran down the neck, and the back and tail had ossicles and large conical scutes that ran in parallel rows. The hips had ossicles and large dome plates that formed a sacral shield, and it had spines on the sides of the neck that were larger by the shoulders and then small again along the side of the body. It ended at the hips. Sauropelta had flat, triangular plates on both sides of the tail that pointed outwards, and it had large shoulder spines. The spikes would have made it look larger and been intimidating, which could have been good for defense. Soropelta was quadrupedal and herbivorous. It was probably slow moving. Its forelimbs were shorter than its hind limbs, and it had this wide body with a broad pelvis and rib cage and large limbs overall. It had stout feet, stout limbs, stout shoulders, and the feet were also short and broad. It probably had a web, quote unquote, of skin between its toes, and the toes were spread out to distribute weight, and it probably had padding to cushion its steps. Sort of like an elephant. Sort of. But not the same. No. <laughs> so Sorafelta was adapted to be heavy, and it had a stiff tail, a short neck that was also stiff, and a triangular skull that was flat at the top, not domed. So it had the stiff tail as a notosaur, but it didn't have the club on the end of it quite yet. Yeah. So it's like getting towards the club tail, but not quite there. It's more like a bat tail. A bat tail. Oh. Or like a baseball bat tail. Yeah. Not like a the flying mammal, mammal bat yeah. tail. <laughs> Yeah, since it was a notosaur, it didn't need the club. Sauropelta's thick roof of the skull had flat bony plates that were very tightly fused. They looked smooth, but that could be due to preservation or the preparation of the fossils. It had these thick triangular scutes that were coming out from behind the eyes, below the eyes, and near the cheeks, and it had leaf-shaped teeth that was used to cut through vegetation. It probably had a keratinous beak, and it may have been a low browser, maybe eating conifers and cycads. Would have been hard for it to eat anything high off the ground <laughs> with yeah. that low center of gravity. That's true. So Sauropelta was one of the earliest known notosaurids, and the type species is Sauropelta edwardsorum. There might be other species. They're not named, though. The genus name means lizard shield, and that name refers to its armor. Barnum Brown found the holotype of Sauropelta in the Cloverly Formation in Montana in the early 1930s in the Crow Indian Reservation. They also found two other skeletons. One of those skeletons had in situ armor and is on display at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. John Ostrom from Yale's Peabody Museum found more specimens in the Cloverly Formation in Wyoming and Montana in the 1960s and named Sauropelta in 1970. Ostrom named it Sauropelta Edward Sorum. And George Olszewski changed it to Sauropelta edwardsi to adhere to Latin grammar rules. Sometimes Sauropelta is confused with the name Peltasaurus, which Brown used in lectures and museum exhibits, but was never officially a name or in the description. Oh, no. This happens sometimes. In 1972, the name Peltasaurus was published with a photo of one of the Sauropelta specimens, which probably added to confusion. But Peltasaurus is already the name of a North American lizard. Carpenter and others described material of a large notosaurid that was found in Utah in the Cedar Mountain Formation in 1999 and said it was possibly a new species, but they didn't name it. And later, Carpenter only referred to the specimen as a notosaurid. Other fossils were found but haven't been officially described, and they include a skull from the Cloverleaf Formation and a large fragmentary skeleton from the Cedar Mountain Formation. 
possibly soar up to footprints have been found in British Columbia and Canada. Charles Sternberg found them in 1932, but it's not known for sure. They're known as Tetrapodosaurus borealis, an ichnogenus, originally thought to be a ceratopsian, now thought to be a notosaurid. That's according to Kenneth Carpenter in 1984. Yeah, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between different ankylosaurs by looking at a footprint. Yes. Sauropelta lived in wide floodplains near rivers that flowed to the shallow inland sea. There's lots of river flooding, so it was muddy. And after Cloverly, the shallow sea expanded and became the western interior seaway. Other dinosaurs that lived at the same time and place as Sauropelta included the ornithopod Tenontosaurus, which is the most common herbivore there, the ornithopod Zephyrosaurus, Titanosaurs, the theropod Deinonychus, the Ovaraptorosaur Microvenator, and the theropod Acrocanthosaurus. And other animals, not dinosaurs, that lived in the same time and place as Sauropelta included lungfish, mammals, turtles, and crocodilians. And if you want to play with a Sauropelta, <laughs> one of Mattel's 2020 Jurassic World Primal Attack toys is called Savage Strike Sauropelta. Savage Strike. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of Future Man, if you were to say the act that you're doing. <laughs> You'd be like, tail whip. <laughs> Savage strike. Ah. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash inodino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 